his participation in polygyny has much to do with my participation in living my life. And we all can help each other and help the stress stressors and help to not apply pressure to a marriage or to a lifestyle that already has the weight of the world on it. Assalamualaikum, peace. It's Fatima, Coach Fatima, one third of Outstanding Personal Relationships and co author of the book Let's Talk Polygyny Uncensored. Now, in this video, I want to answer a question that has been directed um, personally towards me, which is fine. It's a great question. The question is, how to make polygyny sustainable? How do you, how do you maintain it? How do you stay? How do you manage? You know, uh, many would say, how do you cope with it? There's a few things. You have to tell yourself that you can sustain, you know, in polygyny. You can sustain the marriage. You can handle much of what is going on with the proper intentions, education, um, willingness for it to be successful. I remember thinking to myself just personally, and I've said this before, uh, because it's just something that I used to kind of just sit on and ponder and overthink because I didn't have the tools. There was no PR, there was nowhere to turn to. The leadership in my uh, community was afraid and didn't even know how to approach the subject in a proper fashion. They didn't know how to offer support. And I'll say it, they need to get educated and they need to become better so that when people come to them um, locally, they can handle um, so many different general questions in an easier way. And if they cannot, they can always visit Outstanding Personal Relationships on YouTube, Facebook, and Outstanding Relationships on IG because we're not afraid to talk about the tough things. And we're not afraid to approach tough topics such as sustainability in polygyny. Um, thoughts are things. If we tell ourselves it's not gonna work, it won't. Because then our actions will support what we said. And people think it's this quick, overnight success. And we always say, don't look at our chapter 12 <laughs> and look at your chapter one and say, how come it's not like that? Well, you don't wanna have to go through what we went through to get here. So with the, the beauty of OPR is there's three different perspectives and I always say that. So many times people wanna see this initial wife, husband perspective and not have the subsequent wife perspective. But I think that um, I know full well, you know, matter of fact, that having multiple perspectives of the same lifestyle. Just want to give you all a heads up on my group coaching. I'm so excited about it. So many of you have asked about it. And if you're on a wait list, make sure that you sign up to be on my wait list for group coaching by visiting coachfatima.com to register for that. It's so exciting. I have so many different things to share with you all. If you want to level up and meet the champion within, please join and become a part of the wait list. I'll see you guys soon. Assalamu alaikum. Peace. There's power there, there's hope there, there's encouragement there because there's certain questions that you can ask uh, the co-wife versus asking the husband because he's not living her life. He's not. He can probably give you some baseline answers. Like, is she sick? Yes. <laughs> was this difficult for her? Yes, it was. But to get into the depth 
or the magnitude or the challenges that she specifically faced as a wife, he cannot answer those things the way that she can because he's not walking in that lifestyle. So many times people want to mesh and melt the personality of the husband and his wives into one big ball in polygyny, and it does not work that way. We're still individual people living in our own experiences. I, I don't know what it feels like to be a husband between two wives, three or four. I don't know what that's like. I cannot imagine. I, I, I can't. The magnitude of it. The stress. <laughs> Um, the triumph, the blessing that it is. I don't know. But what I do know is that when you're in polygyny, it's not something where the, you just feel successful all the time. Maybe it's a future goal. Maybe it's a current goal. Maybe it's something that you're working on presently, which feels very liberating. Even in your most challenging times, I'm telling you from my own experience that when I began to try, my healing was accelerated. My healing was 10 x because I began to try to make things work. Because oftentimes we don't want to be responsible for the success of polygyny. I don't know why I can't say success sometimes. I don't get it either. Anywho, let me get back over here to um, being successful in it or having the, the intention to be successful. See, one thing about being in polygyny now in year 12 and, and, and not even just this year for me personally, I love the feeling of having purpose in not only my own marriage, but in polygyny. Now, for those of you, you that are new, uh, and there might be very few of you, I'm not sure. I'm the initial wife uh, to Coach Nadir, and I'm saying that because it's, it's a little bit more difficult. It was more difficult to get the, to the point of accepting the fact that I could be of assistance in polygyny. I could have, or I can make things easier by making things easier in polygyny, I made things easier on myself and others. See, sometimes we have an issue with the and others part because we don't want to make it easier for our husbands to be married to other women or another woman. And then something hit me one day. Why in the hell wouldn't I want to make it easier for my own husband to like just live his life? But not erase the fact that I'm part of that life. Not the entirety of it, but part of it. So his participation in polygyny has much to do with my participation in living my life. And we all can help each other and help the stress, stressors and help to not apply pressure to a marriage or to a lifestyle that already has the weight of the world on it. And I said, that's the key. By making it more difficult for any one of us to practice polygyny or be in polygyny with the man practices polygyny, we are the wives, you know, so we're not married to each other. We're married to the same man. And I have to say that for clarity because there's there's so much going on in the poly community. We're pro, we're pro morals. I don't, I'm not married to my, my co-wife. We don't have a physical relationship for those that are wondering, are they married to each other? Absolutely not. We're married to Coach Nadir and that's where it ends. But we are sisters um, in this deem. We're both practicing Muslims. And with that being said, there's so much power in us making it easier for one another in polygyny and just life in general. You know, I, I can, there's countless times where we, the three of us have made it easier on the other. Countless, countless times. Now, was it always that way? No. And sometimes, let me just say this for the people that don't get what I'm saying. 
sometimes people don't understand. They think it's a black or white thing. They don't think there's a learning curve within polygyny. And I'm here to tell you that there is indeed a learning curve. So sometimes when things are difficult, we're not understanding that the person that we think is making it difficult for us had no intention of making it difficult for you. They don't even know they did anything. Until you say, you know, that was difficult for me. And they'll go, what, do you, what was difficult? Well, when you said, or when you did this and that, and that's, some of this can get nitpicky, you know, and naggy and abusive with the way we communicate with each other. I'm just saying we need to be more mindful and have more self-awareness when we get into this headspace where we want to become accusatory to our spouse, to our co-wife, whether it's them towards us. And this is not a they versus us thing. This is not a us versus our husband thing. It's about not turning into that. It's about not creating that environment. So sometimes we create the environment by our assumptions and thinking that somebody's trying to make it difficult for us when they had no idea that we were going through what we are going through. They had no idea. They're just as blindsided as you are when you come and say, I don't like when you did that. You're going, what? Did what? What did I do? Because there's other things going on in life other than what you are specifically going through. I say it all the time. Polygyny is not just happening to one person. It's happening to the wives, the husband, the children, the bonus babies. It's happening to everyone, whether you speak to them or not. It's about being cordial, but being respectful, even when it's not easy, especially on the days where it's not easy. That's when you get to display growth on the days where it's not easy, because when the days are easy, everybody feels good and happy, but happy we go in and out of sadness. We go in and out of it's about maintaining the, the personal development work. And it's not a quick fix thing. It's the word develop. <laughs> I look at a, a caterpillar and it's chrysalis. And then you, do you look up the next, the very next day, the next moment, and you have yourself a butterfly? No. Everything has its time in which to grow, but it has the intention of growth. The caterpillar don't sit up there and wrap itself in all of that that outer chrysalis and says, well, I'm going to get in here, do, I'm going to do all this work, and then I'm going to get in here, I'm going to stop growing because I'm not happy. It doesn't do that. It doesn't do that at all. It develops itself. And people go, oh, that's an animal. No, duh, it's an animal. I know it's an animal. But we got to think about what beauty came at the end from developing and letting that happen and letting it run its course. And you're going to keep developing. You're going to be in personal development to, the, to your last days because we're all living this life and we're not going to have it all figured out. So we must make sure we study. We must make sure we not only study the books, best practices, but study what's going on inside yourself. And if you need to have a conversation, have the conversation respectfully, respectfully have the conversation. That's what's so nice about communication. We can actually sit down and get to the bottom of things and allow ourselves to grow. Now, <laughs> I hope you guys got some gems from this video. Make sure you guys are following us on our social medias, Outstanding Relationships on IG and Outstanding Personal Relationships on YouTube and on Facebook. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe if you made it all the way to the end of this video. And if you want more details about our coaching and counseling services, make sure you visit us at Outstanding Personal Relationships 
www.amazon.com slash store for details. I'm going to see you guys in the next one. But before I do, I'm going to leave you with a little GLC like we always do. Make sure you're growing intentionally, loving fearlessly, and connecting on a higher level every single day. This is Coach Fatima. See you guys in the next one. So I can peace. Here are three ways outstanding personal relationships can help you. Make sure you guys are following us on our social medias at Outstanding Personal Relationships on YouTube and Facebook and on IG at Outstanding Relationships and also Clubhouse under our names. And make sure you go to OutstandingPersonalRelationships.com and sign up for our email list. And there you will get updates on our new book, Let's Talk Polygyny Uncensored. Absolutely. And... Last but not least, when it comes to coaching or counseling, if you want to work with us one-on-one -on -one or in group settings, make sure you're on that website and reach out to us because we do have very limited spots and we like usually have a wait list. So with that being said, GLC. Make sure you are growing intentionally. Loving fearlessly. And connecting on a higher level every, every single, single day. day. Stone Lake. Peace. Peace.